Hello, I'm Beko Pin and you're watching Rappler. This episode of Rappler Talk is making me nervous because one of our guests is a literal legend in the creative industry and the other guest is a legend in the making. Hindi yun bola. Today on Rappler Talk, we're joined by Ricky Lee and and Shang Di because we will be talking about the I Want TFC series Trip to Kiapo based on the 1998 book by Ricky Lee. So thank you for joining us, Sir Ricky and and Shang. Hi, Bea. Hi, and Shang. <laughs> Hi, Sir Ricky. Hi, Bea. Nice to see you again. Hi, Ron. <laughs> okay, thank you guys for making time for us. Okay, so Trip to Kiapo, it's, it's streaming already on... Uh, I want TFC. So, paano ba ito nag- nagsimula? At kailan siya nagsimula? Um, ABS-CBN approached me in 2018 para gawin siyang that time, di namin alam, documentary, docudrama, basta ilagay siya on air. And so, I got excited and I said yes agad. Dahil although 1998 pa yung libro, parang suddenly magkakaroon siya ng bagong buhay, audiovisual. Mas maraming mm-hmm. mararating. So, it was very exciting. We started working on 2018. Madaming drops yun eh. Maraming meetings yun eh. Ang daming back and forth, back and forth, comments here, comments there, etc. Until finally, we were able to shoot 2019 before the pandemic. Ayun. And then now, eto na. Sir, 1998, lumabas yung book. Yeah. A- anong mga nagbago? Or may mga nagbago ba? Um, not just, you know, like, Obviously, the world has changed. But like with you as a writer, like ha- have things changed since you first came out with the book? Uh, yes and no. Uh, walang ganong nagbago because may mga bagay na universal and in a way, panghabang buhay na sa mga elements ng pagkukwento, sa pagsusulat, even sa personality ko at personality ng mga katrabaho ko sa industriya o sa workshop. So, Thank God na meron ganung mga consistent pa rin at nandun, steady lang. Pero, yeah, maraming changes na nangyari since then. Well, ang pinakamalaking change yung pandemic, syempre. Uh, hindi na ako makapag-workshop dito sa library. Eh, kaya nga, ano, camera virtual. yung kausap natin ngayon, sir. Virtual hindi isa, isa. <laughs> At yung background ko, virtual. Hindi yan yung totoong, <laughs> ano, but then ako nagpapa-workshop. So, uh, I had to adjust eh sa bagong technology ng pag-workshop. Uh, but I think okay lang. That's why swak na swak yung I want series eh. Sa ganitong panahon eh. When ang kaharap natin 90% of the time, at least ako eh, screen mo lang yeah. cellphone hanggang chatter chatter. So yun. Yeah. So meron tayong relationship with the screen. So tamdama siya. Ngayong panahon ito. Right. Um, for me, interesting yung series kasi parang it's built as a masterclass. But it's not just a lesson. It's also, a, it's a narrative in itself, right? And then that's where Enchong comes in. So how did you get involved in the project? Or when when was it first pitched to you or, or mentioned to you? I think it was early this year when we first met. And then um, I was invited to the famous workshop uh, location of Sir Ricky Lee, which is his house. And I'm also fortunate to be able to um, try his famous snack sa bahay niya, which is the lumpia. Um, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was just really a smooth, um, what do you call that? Scheduling, smooth, um, uh, what do you call that? Taping. People that were involved in the production were really fun to be with, like to be with, even the cameraman, of course, the direct trip also. So it was very smooth only until the pandemic hit. Wait, but you were done. You were done shooting already your parts when the pandemic hit or did you also shoot partially during? There are There are episodes that weren't shot actually um pero nagawa nila ng paraan and but i i, I kept telling direct rev and sir Ricky na, let's let's do this let's let's still finish this yeah. but i think the i want tfc group has a plan already on how they will finish the entire book so we'll see but hopefully when this pandemic is over we can do something to add to the entirety of the docu series yes kasi may plano naman kami when we 
talked last time na we'll see what's going to happen with this. Kasi kung successful to, it becomes just a first part. Because yeah. we wanted sana na ituloy, ituloy yung produkto ng workshoppers or ni Julio na isushoot na yung kanyang istorya. And then mag-invite din kami sa readers kung magsasabit sila ng stories nila kasabay ng kwento ni Julio. And then isushoot yung mga kwentong yon interactive, and then 50 So it's cent- interactive. So, yeah, we wanted, we were that ambitious okay. last time. And hopefully, matuloy pa rin. Eh, dahil sa pandemic, medyo na, na, na stall yung ganong plano. Pero pag naging successful itong first part na to, and maybe pwede na mag-shoot sa labas, then maybe we can proceed with that plan. So, in which case, matutuloy yung mga plano namin ni na Enchong at ni na Treb. Na sir, nabanggit, nabanggit mo nga kanina, sir, na uh, because of the pandemic, but you have also had, uh, you've had to adjust. Um, yeah. And oh. your workshops have moved online. Yes. Yes. Um, bakit nga ba important sa, in- sa iyo yung workshops na yun? I mean, because y- you are the Ricky Lee, right? Like, uh-huh. your work speaks for himself. Why is it still important for you to diba, make the effort to... <laughs> Uh, I, I keep telling people, I've been telling them these past years na ang pinakamahalaga sa akin ngayon yung workshops ko. More than my own works. Movies man or sa libro and so on and so forth. Although lately, yun ang sinasabi ko lagi sa workshoppers ko noon in the past. Uh, no, this past three, four, five years. Pero yung totoong huling taon, naingkit ako sa kanila kasi sabi ko, nagsusulat kayo lahat at priority ko yung pangarap nyo. Parang gusto ko rin magsulat. So, sinabayan ko sila. Sabi ko, pantay na tayo. Pangarap nyo at pangarap ko na ang priority ko. Pero mahalaga pa rin sa akin yung pag-workshop. I think it's important that as you're learning, you share. I think mabubulok siya sa loob mo pag hindi mo sinishare. Eh. I think kakabit ng learning is sharing. Pagpasok, paglabas. So, sa akin, it should be automatic. That's why I started doing, holding workshops maski na nakakadalawa o tatlong taon pa lang ako in the industry. And pe- some people might think na, ano karapatan yung magpa-workshop? No, karapatan ko is may kutayong karanasan that I can share. So, right, right. Which, which leads me to ask you, sir, um, anong mga, like, ano yung siguro, siguro ang dami nito, pero ano yung mga lessons or most, one of the more important lessons that you've learned from the people in the workshops that ah, you hold? Yeah. No, kasi I want to make it clear na habang natututo ako sa workshop, ay, no, sorry. I want to make it clear na habang natututo sila sa akin sa workshop, Mm-mm. lalo akong natututo from them. Kasi ako mag-isa lang. Sila 30. So I'm learning from 30 people with different philosophies, styles, personalities, moods, and everything, and works. So nahihila ako in 30 different directions. I'm learning so much. Basta I allow myself. And I'm imbibing so much from them. Hindi lang energy, kundi thoughts, perspective, and so on nila. So, so natututo ako ng malaki sa kanila. At isa sa malaking natutunan ko as a writer, a, a writer is not an island. Mm-hmm. You need other people. You need to collaborate. You need to belong to a community. You have to be with others. Ang lungkot-lungkot magsulat. You need others to be with you, to write, to collaborate, magpagbanggaan. And ang saya-saya ng community sa workshop. Dahil dun sa okay. dahil sa ganung paniniwala namin na. Kung may na-achieve man ang workshop ko na napakahalaga, I think yun yun. Nakapagbuo sila ng isang community that makes you feel na hindi ka nag-iisa bilang isang writer. Right. Andito kami lahat. We're going through the journey sabay-sabay. Because it can be a very lonely undertaking. It is very lonely and frustrating. <laughs> and right. oftentimes devastating. But it's also <laughs> very... <laughs> Pero, napareflect ako sa devastating, ano? sir. Pero napaka- napareflect ako dun sa devastating. <laughs> yeah, it can devastate. I mean, all the rejections and everything, and then ano to, walang nangyayari. Pero the moment na may nangyayari, the moment na may nag-click, then it's so glorious and ecstatic and everything na maganda. So you're ready to be devastated again. <laughs> Parang renewed ka kung baka. Yeah, that's why the workshop helps. Going through okay. the ups and downs, the devastations and the joys and the agonies and the ecstasies, it helps Now you have people with you, okay. with the same dreams. Perhaps because I wasn't smart or brave enough to actually attend your workshops in person when when in-person events could happen. Si Enchong yung tatanungin ko, what was the experience like? 
um, of, of working. I know you've worked before with Sir, but I guess this this project is a little more much more intimate, right? Because you're basically going inside Ricky's head, right? Through through the series. very through. much. I'm actually very fortunate, very humbled that they chose me to be part of this and to be given the role of Huliung Manonulat. When I first found out that I would be able to have a scene with Sir Ricky, I was like, you know what? Um, now that I'm thinking about it, kahit siguro walang bayad tong project na to, I will, I will still do it um, simply because Sir Ricky, no matter what, um, no matter how successful he is and no matter how um, how much of a foundation he is in the industry. He's very open. He 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 loves listening. Totoo sinabi niya kanina. He loves learning from the younger people, from his workshoppers. And that's what I actually got from shooting with him because um, he visited us in the set and he was very open. Sabi ko, Sariki, um, guide nyo ako, direct rep, guide nyo ako. Sabi na, just go crazy. O how, kung paano mo siya makikita sa utak mo, just attack it that way. So that, that's why I'm really happy and really excited for this project because they allowed me to be crazy. <laughs> and pag tinitingnan namin si Enchong doon sa set, kasama ko yung assistant ko, sabi namin, sabi namin, ang gusto ko sa'yo ni Enchong, ha? kasi he was doing everything na kabaliwan na dinadaanan ng isang writer. Na hindi ko na-imagine na, oh nga, oh nga, oh nga, ganun lahat. So he was really, he was really into it. So we so were lucky in Enchong. So, which which makes me wonder, like, do you still when when you see your written work come to life as interpreted as in to this day, but does it still amaze you how your like how your words tr- can translate um, through yeah. an actor? Oh yeah, um, parang suddenly, mas kina ano ka nagbus ng panahon writing the script. Pag binigyan buhay na siya, pag mahusay yung mga taong gumawa, director, artist, at lahat, then it's very mesmerizing. Right. Oh, you can pretend na hindi mo na trabaho ito. Para kang inaangat niya. May kaluluwa na to, may puso na. Lumilipad na yung trabaho. I, I, nothing can compare. Sabi ko sa'yo, kaya maski nagaano ka hirap magsulat, the moment na nakita mo siya, realized into life on the screen. At, and it works. Everything gels. Wala, wala, nothing can compare. You'll keep going through all the difficulties again and again and again for, for, that, for that moment. Sub say screen and and in many instances I felt that when I was watching what Trev and Enchong did, like apa di palang ganito to, apa di palang ganito to. Sadly, parang lumipad yung sinulat mo. Si parang yung 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 work mo na dadagdagan din ng work ng iba. Yeah, and nakaroon ng ibang perspective o nahila o nakita mo from another point of view na o nga. And then iba eh iba siya sa dinadala mo sa loob mo na buhay na buhay. Then suddenly, ito na siya ngayon sa harap mo. May kulay, gumagalaw. It's it's magic. It's pure magic. Sir, I always ask this sa creatives kasi like kami in, in, in Rappler, like we're writers but we're journalists, right? Like the, the words that we come out with, it's not all, we don't, we don't need to bear our soul. In, in, in the in the words that we come up sometimes we do but we don't yes. need to you know I, I feel like for creative right for for creatives there's a lot more soul bearing involved yes. like yes. what's that always something na hindi ka na nagdadalawang isip na shit of course I'll bear my soul or is it something that you had to learn then through the years I get yes and no uh, uh, I'm a very shy person Pero the moment na nagsusulat ako, I'm ready to bear everything because it's the only way that you can write. Uh, sabi nga ni Ernest Hemingway, ang dali lang naman na magsulat eh. Harap ka lang sa, sa, sa papel or sa computer and then uh, gilitan mong iyong music. Uh, is it your wrist? Until it bleeds. So ganun daw kadali lang pagsusulat. So, yeah, naka-expose ka eh. But you get used to it eh. I suppose may konting narcissistic element ang mga writers. Uh, there's something inside me na gusto kong lumabas and yet dinideny ko na gusto kong lumabas. But the moment I start writing, it comes out and I feel good na nare-release ko yun eh. So, yes and no, nakakahiya na nakaka-awkward watching my work, especially kung kasama kong mga kaibigan na nanonood. But on the other hand, you feel a sense of validity eh. A, 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 a sense of empowerment. Right. Nakatulog kami na create. Ang hirap i-describe, pero masarap siya. So, yeah, uh, okay lang ako. 
na mapanood ko ang works ko. Ang mas mahirapan na ako mapanood, sarili ko. Like, nung ganito, kaharap ko sarili oh. ko. No, Or, so what was that experience like, sir? It's uh, uh, extensive, know. obviously, yung scenes mo sa series. I know. In the past, <laughs> I kept saying no, eh. Like, maalala mo kaya sinamalo nag-aalok ko oh, Ricky buhay mo etc mas kinindi nga ako ang gaganap lalabas at lalabas ako eh and then at one time we wanted to do my life story with Regal kay Marilu de Sabaya and nag na at nag-meeting na then nagka-cold feet ako matras ako so I've always said no to appearing in my films except now may gumawa ng docu on me si Ron Byron and so nag-agree na ako ngayon pinadala niya sa akin yung screener Hiya, hiya, napanood na muna ba, sir? Awkward ako na panuorin. Hindi ko siya matuloy-tuloy na panuorin na natuloy-tuloy. Na awkward akong tinitingnan ng sarili ko. So, so may konting ganon. Yeah, uh, gusto mo ilabas ang mga kwento ko, pero ay akong pati ako ilabas. Right. Unlike si Naencho, mga artista, sila ang nakalantad. Which, which leads me to my question for Enchong, kasi nga, ito nga itong pandemya, sunod-sunod din yung creative projects mo, right? Like, you have your YouTube series, you have Yumi Maybe, among other things that you've come out with. Um, ha, like, ayoko ng leading question eh. Pero parang, how would you compare yourself to Julio Manunulat? Like, are you the same in the agonies that you go through in the creative process? Or is it easy for you? <laughs> I think um, because personally, I like writing letters, love letters, Christmas letters, birthday letters. It's something that I'm um, passionate about when when I get to write um, love letters to the people that I get to hang out with, that I worked with. Um, it's the same. It's so hard to start. Um, hindi mo alam kung... Um, do I do I greet them first? Do 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 we do I say something um, like a past experience with that friend? But it all goes to okay, relax, gibberish. So I would type on my phone, and then all of a sudden it would just flow naturally. So I think it's the same with Julio Manunulat because um, the hardest part will always be starting, but then it's all here, it's all here, it's all here, it's in our soul. And then, if you just allow it to free flow, eventually, dire-diretso siya. Kapag nasimulan mo na siya, mas madali mo na siyang ma-ilalabi ma, ma, yung journey ng character. And so is yourself. And so is the, um, the love letters that I'm writing. Right. Sir, sir may, may, may nagtataka lang din ako. Like, kasi obviously, other people speak about you know, your legacy, your impact on them. Is, is your legacy something that you think about? No, uh, <laughs> I, otherwise I'd be so self-conscious. I think, yeah, yeah so I, I think you just keep doing it. Uh, parang I'm a writer, so I have to keep writing. Kung baker ako, I'll keep baking. Kung doctor ako, I'll keep treating people. Eh, I'm a writer, so I don't stop writing. I don't have to think of anong output ko, anong legacy. I have to keep writing, otherwise parang namatay na ako. Great, great. So, <laughs> May favorite ka ba, sir, sa mga gawa mo? Siyempre, oo. Sabi mo kanina. <laughs> uh, kung, uh, well, usually, yung sinasagot ko dyan, wala. Kasi palit ako ng palit ng favorite or ayaw kong may favorite. But but actually, pag pinag-isipan kong mabuti, maybe, at least ngayon, this very moment, maybe it's moral because that's me. Uh, may humor, may, na, may, na, may malungkot, may political. Uh, kasi ako bilang tao, kung pagkain ako, halo-halo ako eh. So, moral is ganun din, na halo-halo siya eh. Hindi siya isang linear lang na, na tone o, o, o mood eh. So, I suppose moral, ang salat ng pelikula ko pinaka-personal sa akin at pinaka nagre-reflect sa kung anong personalidad ko. Okay, so Enchong, what's the most important thing you've learned um, from working on Jokto Kiyapo? Um, I think I'm in the age of we're in. I have so much goals. I have um, like a five-year plan, ten-year plan, and it also represents the destination, the Kiapo. But I think this project reminded me, and also Sir Ricky reminded all of us that you know what? No matter how we get there, always cherish the process, always cherish the journey, because and dami mong matututunan don. And the destination will always be um, beautiful. It will always be meaningful. 
but never forget the process. Right. Sir, yung, yung ano ko naman dyan, kasi actually, nung, kasi I watched the pilot episode earlier, and that specific part like struck me about like not being obsessed with the destination because i think i don't know unfairly or fairly millennials and and gen z parang nililabel kami parati na nagmamadali um hindi ko alam kung tama ba yun or or ano ba yun pero so in first of all so like do you agree with that notion na um millennials and gen z's were always in a rush um In a way, yes, because I noticed that even in my workshoppers. But I don't see it as a negative thing, eh. Okay. Ang yung lagi kong sinasabi, kung ano ka, good and bad sides mo, ikaw yun, eh. Then turn it around and make it good. Because if you keep trying not to be yourself, dahil ay talkative ako, or makulit ako, or nerd ako, or I'm always in a hurry, hindi mo naman mababago yun, eh, personalidad mo yun, eh. What you do is turn it around and make it work. So, come up with films na may urgency, may rush, may pagiging hurry, rather than very languid. But on the other hand, uh, if people keep saying na you're lagging in a hurry, nagmamadali, then go opposite. I always tell my workshoppers, always go opposite. So, lagging fight the pagmamadali, slow down, uh, etc. Keep still, pause, and so on. Pagbalik mo ngayon sa pagiging nagmamadali ka pa rin, nahaloan na siya ng stillness, ng quietness. So you're combining the two. So wala sa aking good and bad sa creative work. You just turn it around, combine the bad and the good, and then that's you. So, Make it work so what kung nagmamadali? O so what kung right. mabagal? It's you. Right. Make it work. Right. right. So you're also talking about the workshops because you mentioned this before we started recording. Like, ano yung mga major things that you've changed through the years? Uh, yeah, like, like now, ginagawa ko na siyang mas composite ng paggawa ng isang pelikula. Like, lately, lagi ako may mga artista. I make sure na at least mayroon dalawang artista. Kasi nakita ko kung gaano kalaki ang naitutulong ng mga artista sa workshops ko. May iba silang perspective, may iba silang take sa lessons, may iba silang lalim na naibibigay sa amin sa pag-analyze nila, pagbasa nila ng mga characters. Kasi sanay sila eh, na nag-create sila ng characters eh. From the pinakailalim ng kanilang kaluluwa. So, iba yung nakukuha ko sa kanila at iba yung nakikita ko sa works nila at iba yung napag-contribute nila sa discussion sa workshop. So, sabi ko ay, lagi na ako maglalagay ng mga artista. Sina Agot Isidro, sina Bea, sina Meryl, etc. Ang dami nilang naibibigay sa, sa workshop. So, yun. And then, naging mas open na rin ako. May musical scorers ako, sina Jesse Lasatin, and so on. May editors. And, Meron na akong mula sa documentarists hanggang sa experimental filmmakers naging mas broad na yung right. inaano ko sa workshop. So yun din sir yung you learning from from I am learning from them. I'm being stretched right? hanggang dun sa experimentation hanggang dito sa including sa music and so on. So ang term ko diyan is glorious. Right. A glorious experience. Sir, para naman sa mga aspiring writers or practicing writers na na hindi mahanap ang kapo nila, hindi ma- kung either hindi nila matultol kung ano ba yung destination nila or hindi don't or hindi rin nila alam yung path to that destination. Like, I mean, from all your years of experience, what can you do? Um, may I, I, I think dalawa. Uh, una, meron kami exercise tawag namin Budaya Search. Pumunta ka sa bodega ninyo. Lumang bahay, lumang hometown, lumang simbahan, lumang kwarto. May makikita ka doon mga objects. Siguro yung love letter nung tatay mo, or faded picture nung lola mo, o yung ex mo, yung ex-files mo. Lahat ng mga break-up letters na sa ex-files. Bawat isa doon, may kwento na ang nakalagay sa kwentong yun, ikaw. So, kwento mo yun, and kwento ng object. So, that's one way na madali. Huwag mong isipin ng mga critics o ibang mga manunod o magwapasa ng story mo. Just tell that story. Ang second point ko is, ano bang pinaniniwalaan mo? Kung naniniwala ka sa ganito, ganito, politically man, socially, whatever, kung anong belief mo, anong tingin mo sa mundo, anong tingin mo sa ibang tao, anong tingin mo sa sarili mo, yun ang sabihin mo. Again, huwag mong isipin yung magiging comments o reaction ng ibang tao. Ikwento mo ang iyong paniniwala. Kasi that's the passion that's going to drive you. If you combine both, 
the story of that faded love letter and picture and their real belief now, the writing should be easy. When I say easy, marami pa siyang ikokoket ayusin, but it should easily come out. Then you can write. And that's your voice. That's your unique voice na galing sa loob mo. Sa puso ko rin yan para kung uh, yeah. so next time that I can't write, even if it's not technically go, a creative work. Go, go to your bodega, <laughs> go to your past, go to your family, interview your lolo and lola, paano sila nagkatagpo. Kung hindi sila nagtagpo, hindi ka ngayon pinanganak. There, ang daming kwento doon. At mas kwento mo yun eh. Loob mo yun eh. Thank you so, both so much for your time. Okay, so um, if you want to promote uh, Trip to Kiapo, which is now streaming. Ah, oh, sige. Ako muna. <laughs> so, sana po samahan nyo kami sa Trip to Kiapo, isang docu drama series ng I want TFC na magsisimula na mula ngayong gabi, ngayong araw na to. Uh, isa po siyang napaka-enjoyable na paglalakbay kasama si Enchon D bilang Julio Manunulat directed by Trev Monteras. Yes, um, everyone please do give time. Um, do yourself a favor lalo na if you are an aspiring writer in the future. This is our guidebook. This is our Bible. The uh, Trip to Quiapo, the Ricky Lee script writing masterclass docu-series starting today, October 21, sa I Want TFC. Available sa standard and premium subscribers namin. And thank you very much for giving us time to share. And Sir Ricky Lee, thank you very much for your brain and for your heart. And thank you, sir, for sharing. Like, always taking the time out to share with, um, you know, younger writers. Or even, even not not just younger, but like, diba, people who are eager to learn. Yeah, mix. Um, Meron kaming okay. 70 years old. Meron kaming 16. From 16 oh, years so old to 70s. From Dubai to South Korea to Mindanao and, and so on. And I think also, like, for the journalists who, who might be watching this, baka akala nyo political interview to hindi, entertainment. Pero, I mean, I think a lot of journalists will also have a lot to learn. Um, they have a lot of from... stories. Uh, kayo, yung journalists, ang dami-dami yung kwento na nakikita, nakukuha, nasasagap sa palibot with every person that you talk to. Sayang all those stories kung hindi nyo gagawin kwento. I mean, since hindi namin nakukwento, no? Sige, sir, okay. mag- ipag-chika ako sa'yo off-air yeah. about those stories that we have failed or we, we can't write because for so many reasons. So, Trip to Quiapo is now streaming on I Want TFC. And if you want a copy of the book itself, you can check out uh, Sir Ricky Lee's official Facebook page kasi kung doon kayo bumili, may dedication pa. <laughs> so, um, yes, thank you for watching, Rappler. Thank you for watching this interview. This has been Bea Kupin. Support Filipino creatives and thank you for watching. Bye.